It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Hey, man. Hey. We back again, man. I got my guy here today, y'all. I feel real good. He been making moves when he left. I thought, I was like, man, maybe he gonna chill. He, I don't even know if he knew that other one was gonna happen. Stuff just fall in your lap sometimes. It's don't gonna it? fall at me. Check it, man. Mr. Lee is in the building. What it do? Man, how you doing, man? Chilling, chilling, man. Blessed to be here. Man, I'm glad you came, bro. Like, like what, uh, man, you know, what we want to start with Mr. Lee, man. Mr. Lee is a, a, a guy who, who basically... You know, when I think of you, I, I just feel like, man, you done did everything that a man could do when it comes to producing, to be pretty, honest with pretty you. Pretty much, man, pretty much. Yeah, like, when that, that I seen uh, I seen when you when when the Drake thing happened, mm -hmm. did you even have any idea that was going to happen? I did. I've been you doing, knew it? I knew it for like six months. I never said nothing, though. Man, yeah. how did you keep that in? How do you contain that? Just contain it, man. I ain't want, you know. I ain't want to get no unnecessary hate, so I just let it. But let you it know that hate coming, right? Oh, it's going to come. <laughs> I, who's that I told last night? Was it last night? Oh, uh, or the night before last. I told, mm -hmm. I told Carl Crawford, I say, uh, the hate come with being a boss. Oh, you're going to get a taste. Yeah, they coming at you. Yeah. No, but I would think that when you've been in the business so long, you don't really get, you get it anymore. you used to it, huh? No, you're going to get it. I mean, when you, if you in the, in the in the trenches and you never get out and you trying to, you know, help everybody and you're doing different shit and you just in that position mm -hmm. then it's easy to get that mm. unless you yeah. just go in and just get in the clouds and don't look, come, don't look back down don't look back down <laughs> man the hate that, that hate is real yeah but I think it's needed it's motivating mm -hmm. I mean it makes you it makes you go harder for me when I when you hate I'm a, I'm a if you that person, but some people they fold on that oh no that's when you that's when you know you're doing it right right mm -hmm. Mr. Lee yeah so man, I mean, so you knew six months before. Um, so how did how does that process? Let me be a little nosy. How does that process go? I know they have to clear it and all that good stuff, but how does that go? I mean, basically, I got an email and they said uh, Drake wanted to use a record and it was an instrumental that I had done and you know they put all of the details in. It was a get throw. And the first one I looked at, I was like, uh, what? I looked at it again. I said, is it a mixtape? It's like, nah, it's the album. I said, oh, wow. So then, you know what I mean, it was like, uh, we could Zoom you in so you can check it out. And, you know, I ended up doing the Zoom and listening to the record, and I went in and signed off on it and approved it. That's big, dog. Yeah. See that right there? That's big, dog. Ain't nobody just doing that, Mr. Lee. I hope you know that. You 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 sitting back calm about it. <laughs> <laughs> Please. They, they done called me. I done told, told you first. <laughs> Baby, guess what? Uh, It's going down. You know, we, yeah, I, I got to, but yeah, no, I wouldn't have been there. You, you, you dope, man. I like that. I mean, you know, it come with time, man. You know, when you when you did it thirty years on anything, it's it's, it's like riding bikes now. You know? Yeah, yeah. But because it was Drake, um, was it just an automatic yes, or would have been some stipulations like if he did something that you didn't like? I mean, it's Drake. I ain't gonna, okay. You know, I mean, Drake, Drake. Automatic yes. Drake already he he makes tasteful music. You know, what I mean, it ain't really nothing negative you can say about Drake. Right. You know what I mean, so the opportunity was there. I got a number one album out of it. Uh, platinum album out of it so you know what I mean it's it's beneficial for me in my career and just something else I could say hey you know what this is another Mount Rushmore mm -hmm. artist that I'm associated with so you know it was a blessing so man when you think about the first one that you got which was what, what was the first platinum one that go went platinum for you um <coughs> I think it was uh my homies my homies yeah. okay the reaction to that one, to this one, is a mature reaction. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that first one, you were like, hey, yeah. When, you, when you've done it 31 times. 31 times. Yeah, you ain't nothing else to talk about. <laughs> 31 times. <laughs> 31 times. And counting. And, and counting. counting. Yeah. And that's and you never know what's going to happen next. And then you work with all the greats. So, man, that's just, I mean, you couldn't write this. And Are you writing a book about it or? No, not not yet. You not know, yet. I mean, I'm getting ready to do a lot of content because, you know, I think uh, some recent events are ma is making me aware that I think uh, the way business is being held is a little lopsided. Yeah. 
And, you know, I mean, being that I'm, I've been in it so long, you know, I, I have a voice, so I'm getting ready to start releasing a bunch of content to try to make it aware to these kids is how they're doing this business that you have a voice, you have a position to play, and you have negotiation room in doing business, and you need to know what that is. And when uh, you said recent events, can you elaborate a little bit about it? Uh, I ain't going to elaborate about it. Not too about much, but just give us a little bit, just a little bit. He always got something you know going what? that I he really, can't talk about. Do you notice that? Hey, man, that's, I'm in <laughs> that's the That's dope, though. I like it. But, I mean, I'll just put it to you like this. I think the producers are not really getting in, getting the business that they need to be getting. And, you know, I'm going to say something. It may... Somebody, people may disagree, they might agree. It don't matter. I mean, you hearing, it's, it's, it's the time now where artists are like, I want to I wanna own my masters, I want mm -hmm. this and that. You know what I mean? Ray Charles and James Brown, they've been doing that for years. But the difference between James Brown and Ray Charles is that they were producers too. So it wasn't another entity in there that was creating these masters. Mm-hmm. And I feel as a producer, it's like you always get a producer deck, and the first thing in the producer deck, you get through the terms, and then the next thing you're talking about is the work for hire for that master, which is signing all of the rights over to that master away. Mm -hmm. It has to be paperwork to, to be established to give those rights away. They're not automatically given away because you, ha you own those rights. Okay. But the paperwork, everybody's used to having the paperwork and saying, oh, Okay, well, I'm just going to sign this, and it, it's not work for hire. It's, I'm doing work for hire just to work for hire the masters, so I'm not owning the masters. Mm -hmm. In some cases, the composition, which is the music by itself, can be included in that work for hire, and you don't have no rights to none of it. It just depends on what type of terms you're looking at. And I think that a lot of these kids and a lot of younger people that's doing production, and they don't understand that part. They think it's a normal. When you can do something wrong so long, then it becomes the right thing. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. know what I mean? So I just... It's too. It's it's way too lopsided, and you know I think that I it's it. I think for me, I I know that it is, and I've experienced some of it, and I don't think that I could sit around and, and know that and not and not do something. Try about to it. educate mm -hmm. kids about it. You know, what I mean, it's not trying to throw a rock at nobody and nothing. It's just, hey, let's let's make the food chain equal. Yeah. So Other in what collaborating with it? In what way are you trying to? Um, Give this education. You're gonna do um, seminars. Are you doing um, just videos uh, and putting doing, it out I'm there? I'm gonna do a lot of videos and uh, just encourage people to make sure that you have a, uh, an attorney and a good attorney. You know, an attorney that's gonna work for you, not an attorney that's gonna take your money and tell you what they think. You need somebody that's gonna actually sit in here and look at the benefits of what you're trying to do in order to move forward and you know make decisions. And will this be a platform that they can go to freely or will they have to pay to get to this platform to see uh, those videos? I'm just going to give it to them. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't want to I don't want to charge nobody for it. Yeah. But I think that, you know, a lot of people will be scared to get blackballed or be the bad guy. Oh, we're not going to work with him cuz he's negotiating too hard. My philosophy philosophy has always been I I could be broke easily by just sitting on my ass. I don't want to break my bust my ass and be broke. Mm, I agree. You know what I mean? If I do one or two and I get the turns that I want, then I'm good. Because at the end of the day, if you don't own no type of percentages in anything, and I'm not talking about publishing, just all the way around. Mm -hmm. When you get my age, then the, the, the passive income is not coming. I've been working so hard and, do, and doing so many things until now. Everything that I've done 10, 15 years a goal is starting to come back into fruition and mm -hmm. people starting to use the, that music. And on top of that, I'm still current myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? It's, You're it's, killing it. Yeah, it, it's just a blessed situation to be in. But if you don't position yourself, then there's no way that you can continue to exist. And I've seen so many people that, you know, that were, were super crazy talent and they just lost the way because they couldn't financially stay afloat to doing the things they were doing right you know and they had the talent to do it but the business sense is not there and the just the whole whole thing of feeling like oh if i stand up for myself if i do this then nobody's gonna and being led again. astray by other yeah. people trying yeah. to tell you what to do and really don't have the education to right be able to tell you i just 
you platinum 31 times? 31 I know, that's still blowing your mind. Yeah, because, well, I look at people like DJ Chose. He was on here with Black Card, and, mm -hmm. and and I didn't know that he was platinum like he was, but not 31 times, but he been he did a lot. But he, a lot of times, like, man, he underrated. Mm -hmm. But if he underrated, you hella underrated. You see what I'm saying? I'm underrated, I, but I'm cool, though. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> I'm just, but you're underrated, but it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. But when you're younger, it matters. Not really. Not really. When you're a young man and you're trying it's, to. It's you're business. To, Everybody makes that something that needs to be, you know, I mean, visuality and making music. People are making that a requirement. It's not. Okay. If you're in the business and people are getting music from you and they're doing, you know, and, and you, you, you got a rapport with that. The work is going to keep coming. You don't have to be a celebrity to make money. I get it. See, as I long as the money coming in, that's what I would think. As long as the money coming in and you're paying your bills, you're saving, you're investing, you're doing all of that, then it doesn't really matter about the recognition part. Mm -hmm. Whoever is supposed to know will know because they'll do their research to know. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. That's well, what it is. Yeah, but, uh, man, when you're young, man, <laughs> Come on, man! I was cocky. twenty-three years young old. Young Mr. Lee is the same hey. as no, not today. That's a different Mr. Lee, bro. I was twenty-three years old. I built a seven thousand square foot house wow. from the ground. Man, and nobody knew who the, who the hell I was. That's but crazy. I was making a hundred thousand dollars a month. Nobody knew who you nobody were. Nobody knew. Dang, it's it. Well, so it takes a humble. special kind of mm -hmm. special kind of person to yeah. do that. Everybody not like that. I see it on the internet. I know. They can be it. Right now, everybody yeah. wants to be seen, Mr. Lee, in a way to where they get their recognition while they here. Like, we majority want to be roses. People, majority. Yeah. You have some people who like to stay under the radar. Discreet. But majority of people, I think that has to do with social media. Social media make it where a lot more people try to be out, you know, in the open, want to be seen because that's how they stay relevant, too, and keep those dollars coming in. Yeah, uh, Blackheart. He really, really. He respects you. He, he. Yeah, he loved. He loved what you know. He, you, you like the mentor. You know, yeah. like you, you help these guys, man. These guys that always come through here. And when I told Sergeant Jay, they like he like, man, that's live, man. I wish I could have get. But he wanted to be here. Yeah. Or, or, you know, remember I tell you, like just to hear your voice and talk to you. It's a lot of guys that's he, out there. He another talented guy. You know what I mean? Uh, Sergeant Jay or yeah. Sergeant. Yeah, yeah. He he really like you. Like yeah. last time you was here, I think I told him I was gonna call him, and I didn't get to call mm -hmm. him. It was like I wanted to make that, you know, that because you never met him, right? No. See, and he was like, man, and he'd stay in that studio like all day, all, all day. night, all day, all night, and he's very humble, right? Mm -hmm. he, you know, he that's like what, you, I mean, so I can't. He's very laid back. That's that's where it's at. I mean, you don't have to do all the theatrics to make money. Yeah, yeah. People make things normal that's not normal. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, and they don't. You know, people like me, I'm an OG, so. I've made so many mistakes in this shit. I made bad decisions. I've did a lot of shit. You know what I mean? I'm not perfect. So I'm not going to ever present myself that way. I don't I don't have animosity with people that I have bad business with or if things taking place and I didn't like it. I, I'm a type of person, you know what, well, you might be able to do one thing for me that can catapult me in a, play, in a position that I was trying to get to and I just needed that one little thing that you can do. So I'm never been that person to do that type of stuff. But as an OG, it's for me to say, you know what, yeah, this is what I did. It was wrong. I shouldn't have did this. Don't do what I did. Yeah. Be better. Yeah. I yeah. want you to be better. I don't want to suppress you into being underneath me. Yeah, yeah. I never do because I, 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 to me, I feel like nobody can do Mr. Lee better than Mr. Lee. Can. No. Exactly. Yeah. Man, I... Even on Al D, that crown. What was the last one? We was crown jam ten, mm -hmm. and then we we ain't really just have eleven. Eleven came out. Yeah, eleven out. I got to check it out. Mm -hmm. You man, you were crazy with them. Be I be sitting back just like that. Mills to leave something. He be dropping them projects so quick. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. of those tracks that he got is tracks that some of those tracks are like eight years old, twelve years old. Really? That's yeah. why he can drop it so quick. <laughs> but he, you know, I mean, he he's the perfect person. To yeah. Do. I don't think it's not a track that I can build that Aldi can't rap on. What makes him different? Like, what makes him this 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 guy who's so productive? Like, that can just produce like that. What 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 does that? It's the love, the love for it. Yeah. When you love something, then that energy that you that you have it it translates to other people. Yeah. You know, it make people want to get in the trenches with you and dig in. When you hear something, you when he's rapping, you can feel every emotion that I he's believe saying. it. Yeah. 
And him being so talented as he is, how comes he hasn't blown as he should have? I mean, I think he's in the position that he need to be in right now. Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I, to me, that's what I think. You know, yeah. and we debate about it all the time. Hey, man, should I do this? Or should I, man, man, I think you, you know, we'll, we'll debate. <laughs> he love it. But he love it. I, I do the same thing I just feel like he's doing something that's so special and until he, it's normal for him, but it's not really normal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you have to always just walk through that process until you get all the way to the end of it. And then when it's time to cross over to something else, the timing is going to tell you when it is. Okay. Wow, man! I yeah. sit back and look at what you've done, and look at what he's doing together. I played it for a couple of out of towners that came through. Yeah, them boys thought they were rapping at first until I put that on. When I put that on, that, that's the one I said, "Look, man, when I put this on, I'm letting y'all know, y'all Texas, hey, we got something going here." And I don't know if y'all really even, uh, yeah. I heard yeah, he, what you got. Yeah, I heard what you one. got. Yeah. Not on you too. I, I, but li listen at this, you yeah. know. <laughs> That combination is serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, uh, uh, it's one it was on this that crown number ten. It was, it was just it was like a church song vibe on the first song, mm -hmm. I believe. And and when that's I was, my favorite song. Yeah. It's the first song. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him. I said, "Man, how, how did y'all how did y'all come up with that? You know? I just made the beat and I sent it to him. You know what I mean? I love sending tracks to this dude because he'd be so excited about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just. For me, that is the most important thing that he can give me. I don't the money. I ain't tripping about that money, man. I'm, I'm tripping. I'm I'm so, I'm so invested into the field that I get. You make me happy to be a producer when I'm when I'm doing music with y'all. Both just dope, man. Yeah. And and the, and the and the relationship that you guys have. Yeah, it's uncommon. Like you have it been anybody else that was so easy for you to work with like that? Nipsey was. Nipsey was like that. Yeah. So Nipsey we, was like that. Pimp C was like that. Scarface was, he's like that, but he's more of a, Scarface was more of a mentor for me. He was a, he was a person that can challenge me to be better than, than I, I than I thought I was. How, how so though? How, how, what did he do to he make you feel he that wouldn't, way? He wouldn't, he wouldn't accept me being good. He wouldn't accept nothing that was good coming from me. If it was good, it wasn't enough. So he would, he would push back. He'd push. Hey man, this is dope. I remember one time, bro, we was in a, uh, we was at uh, the Enterprise Studio. We was working on Last of the Dying Breed. Face it, went to Atlanta, and he came back, and we had this song up. We were mixing it, and we man, we were all into it. It was jamming us. Man, this nigga came in the studio, bro, and got walked on the board and and pulled all the faders down. Mm. Really? He didn't want to hear it. He's like, man, do that shit again. That ain't it. Cause he know you can do better. Yeah. Oh, we was pissed off, and man, we wanted the game back in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! I said this motherfucker, man. He really, he really did this shit, bro. Just came in there, shh. like whatever. That ain't, ain't it. Ain't it? I ain't feeling that. Ain't and it. you went in and killed it after mm -hmm. that. Yep. Yeah. So, man, that's good. That's good. That 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 right there motivates you. See again, another way to push you. Yeah. Iron, but I guarantee iron sharpens iron. he doesn't do that every single time. No, bro. but you, I mean, you're just not gonna. You can't be around that dude and be average and be good. <laughs> Cause he ain't gonna fuck with that. He, he never did a bad verse. He's not ever gonna do it, bro. If he it, never that, did a bad verse. If that song don't have a vibe, man, we've done beats four or five times over. Just because he just because it wasn't it. That wasn't it. It was dope to us. Yeah. And to the average listener, if they hear it today, it's dope. But that just wasn't the details of everything that he wanted to fill out of that track. If it wasn't there, it wasn't going. I don't care if it's one little bitty thing. If it ain't there, it ain't going. And what? that's the funny thing, sorry, but right. in um, in any business that you're in, it's like you know what you're looking for. Like a regular person listening to it wouldn't know all the details, wouldn't even hear all the details whenever it come across the way how he wants it to come across. Mm -hmm. We only hear what he's saying and that's it. So all of the fine tune that he's doing, we're not hearing it, mm -hmm. but... Industry people, they're hearing it. Yeah. People have the air for it and stuff like that, and they know, man, he's a genius. Yeah. But but how? But which which song sticks out to you the most with Scarface that you done? Which one sticks out the most? Uh, man, it was one called In and Out that we did with Devin on it, and it was um, uh, man, what is it? Man, it was so many. It was it was another record that we did. I think it had a Red Man on it. Okay, that was real dope. Looking yeah. in my eyes was another. Yeah, one. that was that's a bad that's boy. A, there. That's a dope record. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, 
he he even with that record, he wanted he he challenged us to do the record. So you know he I mean? pushed you to get to that yeah. point where you were at. Yeah. Wow, man. So and nobody else really just was able to because of maybe pimp. Pimp kind of was like that. You know, I mean, as soon as pimp had a record, if it's if it's the one, he gonna go. If it ain't, he ain't. He ain't even gonna rap. Nah, he's not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the time that you seen that happen? I mean. I was been in the studio with him before where he was listening to tracks to me, even with me. When I first met him, I was working on the track, this track called Too Real. And I was making the track and I was real unorthodox on my style of how I come in and make the track and everything. So I started the track off and he wasn't feeling the way I was starting it off. And he looked at face and he was like, man, what is this nigga doing, bro? Face was like, just chill out, just watch. Just, he gonna come up with it, just, just wait. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I came up with it, and after the session was over, he, we talked, and he was like, man, you dope. Yeah. You dope, man, you know what I mean? And we've been friends ever since. But that first initial nah. meet, he wasn't trying to hear it. Nah, he wasn't in it. He was like, what is this face? <laughs> you got to, you think this boy hard? Or what? Yeah, so you know what I mean? It's, I, I always like to be pushed by people. A, a, a new artist can come in the studio and work with me and tell me, hey, man, I think we could do it better. And I'm, I'm going to go and try to do it better. Yeah. I like oh, vibing really? like that. I don't like... A yes man around me. I don't like people that's not going to push me creatively. Well, you should that's love Al D. Let me just say that. Yeah. <laughs> some people like easy. you. Some yeah. people like you would. Uh, I'm not saying you would, but some people in your um, caliber would say, you know, like, who are you to tell me? Because you've been doing this so long. You have a I lot mean, of people like don't that. Don't get it wrong. If I think in my, if I'm convicted with something, then I think it's dope, and you're not following what I'm telling you. And yeah, you might get that. Ooh, you know who I am, right? <laughs> you got to trust. You know, you see all of this shit I got, right? So you, you, you need to trust my ear. Because mm -hmm. sometimes um, I just get ahead of time on things and people not in pocket to receive what it is. And you've had yeah. you've had those cases come yeah, across. all the time. It's records that I've done four or five years and pr present time comes up five years later and the record's out and it's right in with the time. Wow. Is that why people hold back records so long? Sometimes they'll do, just like you said, um, with Aldi, he did it eight years ago or so forth, and he's just now releasing no, it. No, it's his no, beat. Well, your beat, yeah. your tracks. Mm -hmm. But you know how sometimes even <laughs> artists, they'll rap a song and have it holding, and I hear people say that all the time, or people come in and say, well, I did a feature with XYZ, but they haven't released it. They've been holding on to yeah, it. Yeah, Get Throw was like that. Get Throw was a three-year-old record before it got released. Is it because it just wasn't that time? I just, I just think that time? I think people are timid to explore things when they're new. You know, if you look at Get Throw, Get Throw was a rock, guitar rock track. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So you're looking at a, a rock guitar and 808s and different other things going on that probably wasn't really being done at that time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, certain people just, they won't get it right then and there, so they'll sit on it because they don't really understand the trend. They, they may not want to be the first person to go out there with it. Mm. Wow, so when he when when Drake took it and slowed it down, what was that all about? It just the feel, man. He had to put his feel to it. That was his feel. Yeah. So and 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 he already, uh, you know, him and Lil J and him, they already, you know, they moved together mm -hmm. uh, uh, already. So that was easy for you, yeah. Cause that was family. Hey, see, I'm just looking at it from a point yeah. where I know this a family oriented deal because you it's guys history, you know, it, I mean? and you guys been working together, you and Lil J and yeah. for er, forever. Oh yeah, without Jay Prince and Rapper, like it's no Mr. Lee. That's right. So period, you know, what I'm that was a e no brainer. And yeah. I know Jay Prince had to feel away when he seen that because that's a connection. Yeah, I you mean, know? it just it just goes back to all the great great things that we did. You know, yeah. rap a lot. We did a lot of great things, and I think a lot of things go unsaid and and unheard when it comes to that. But you know, I mean, we did a lot of great things in rap a lot. What what was what was the, the, when Jay Prince would get on the track and he say, "Oh yeah," you know. When, <laughs> what what where did that come from? Do, that's, did, that's, uh, do you it. did that's you you remember the call. first time when this first started to happen? He had been doing that shit way before I got there. For real, there. before you got yeah. there. Yeah, that's his calling card. When he, he do that, that, I say, "Oh man, if he give me a bang out the ghetto, yeah, boy, you gonna get something." You know what I <laughs> mean? That all yeah come with a lot of things behind. Oh you know yeah, what I'm <laughs> you know what? You might get a check. You might get a check. You might get a get check. Get checked. You know what I'm so, so shit, you don't know what's coming behind that all yeah. But you, that's his trademark. You know what I'm saying? Well, I used to, me and I used to crack up with dudes sometimes talking about that. I come around him and mimic him and shit when he used to do that. 
But you know what I mean? That's his thing. It's all year and it's, I'm coming it to you in live and living color. Live and living color. You know, the pe- person that can pull that off. Man. did you? So the Respect book, have you read it? I've, I've, I've read some Man, parts. You of like it. me, I've you skim through. You know what? I've been on the audio part of it okay. more than anything. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. me. I do the same yeah. thing. I ain't gonna lie, for some reason, not that, but it kind of make you lazier. Yeah, but I'm, you know, I mean, I'm born, I'm, you, I'm born not dyslexic, so I can't. Okay, really okay, it. yeah. So just sitting there meditating on it, you yeah. gonna be like, oh, I got get frustrated and just. Yeah, so I, you know, I don't really do that. So what's the moment that stick out with you and Jay Prince that 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 you remember? Like, wow, man. I mean, the very first time I seen him, you know, what I mean, I was in the in the compound working in in the studio that a big chief had uh, set up for me, and he had some speakers and all of that shit, and I was in that vibing, you know, what I mean, I was doing my thing, and all of a sudden I seen somebody open the door. He's like, hey, man, can you cut that music down a little bit? And I was like, yeah. I cut the music down, and by the time he walked away, and I thought about it, I said, damn, that was Lil' Jay. I said, oh, shit, that was <laughs> that was Jay Prince, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Fuck, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's the first time that I met him. And then, you know, we had a couple of situations uh, where he entrusted me to work at his studios and pretty much run them, had a conversation with me, and uh, asked me, you know, could I – come in and do do the work and all of that stuff and he entrusted me with it you know what I'm saying so he's always been a person to look at the drive that you got and he you know he appoints people in the positions that he think they can handle and deserve you know what I mean and I, I was blessed to be in a situation where I was just around everything and they trusted me to perform in a certain manner and I did it every single time yeah and and to be able to be entrusted like that and and to be in that because in the moment you you don't know you Sometimes you can't see the picture from being in the mm-hmm. picture. In the moment, you just going through the process of the work, and the, but but the demeanor of you and him, for me, I understand management. Yeah. So I understand that that's a good trait to have. The way y'all demeanor is dealing with people. Mm-hmm. I'm more outgoing. Like I, I get frustrated fast, and I might cuss you out. That's not good. You know what I'm saying? But I've learned over the years to control that. Yeah. Dealing with the people that I've dealt with to be in the positions and places that I am. So mm-hmm. I get it. I understand it. But then I'll be like, nah, I want to push the buck. You know, I cut up a little bit. I'll be trying to pull it back. Yeah. <laughs> but the demeanor of to be humble and to be conservative comes off better when you're dealing with a lot of people. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. So I, I like that. I like that. But I still like to push a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so what, what's next for uh, Mr. Lee? Like, what? No. I want to talk about Slim too, Slim Thug, mm-hmm. the, the way you guys came together and start processing things, you know, because y'all did some work together yeah. too. Um, what was that like? I mean, Slim was a person that uh, was emerging, and he was about to get his major deal when the men him hooked up. We had did a record with a uh, little Kiki and Slim Thug called a Big Unit. Okay. And once that transpired, then I mean, shit, we just came and became a team. Yeah. You know I mean, and uh, me and him, his, his brother Ray Face. We were all we were all tight, you know. We were still tight. Yeah. And we just we meshed together, man. We started a whole movement. That that was really when my sound really became a sound when I started working with Slim. Yeah. So you your sound became a sound when you was working with Slim. To you, that's yeah. just another phase of Mister yeah. Lee. It, it was, was already it was, a sound it was, it to was us. A, it was a Texas sound that came with that Slim Thug and Kiki, with the records that I started doing, the sounds that people are using. That was, you know, what I mean, I, I pretty much that's where it's, that's when it started taking place. That's when I really just stood up and emerged as as Mr. Mr. Lee. Lee. You got to remember when I was a rapper, like I was being mentored by N.O. Joe, Mike Dean, yeah. John Beto. It was great motherfuckers around me every what, day. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Killer Kalyon was there during that time too. Wasn't Killer Kalyon was part of the stuff with the with, 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 yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. And J Dog, did you get to work with J Dog? Oh, yeah, riding on foes. That's my record. <laughs> That damn J yeah, Dog, J-Dog the truth, man. That nigga didn't play no games, boy. Nah. He he was he 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 just had a way that he can't came across that made you feel the streets. Niggas don't realize that. So I love the way that, that them boys was serious, man. And I can't I won't never forget those those times, man. You, those are staples in time. And I think that's something that we, you know, uh as a as a as, as people who consume the music, we we have to we 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 have to hold on to that. You know what I'm saying? I can go put something in like you done already made, and it take me back to a place. That's what the consumer, that's how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that, uh, to a specific moment. You know what I'm saying? In time. Um, so You always um, ended up in the right place the right time to work with the right set of people, it seems. 
How yeah. does that happen? God's plan. It ain't, it ain't about me. It's God's plan. I did 10 years on the run making platinum records. That's year crazy. Year, you know mm. what I mean? So, again, you know what I mean? All of my imperfections and everything that I go through and done and haven't done, you know, it's destiny is destiny. You know what I mean? You can't stop that from happening. And you'll work with anybody that don't have to be, like, big artists? No. Nah, it don't okay. have to be. Yeah. Um, do you feel like uh, Mr. Lee is where he's supposed to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I can see it. I mean, yeah. it's, it, hey, man, it's just dope to see you in this place, man. I wish for everybody who in music to be able to get and accomplish to be where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that would be a great fulfillment for anybody that's yeah. producing or doing music, you know. Um, what about how did you end up like you 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 work with Zero and you work with Slim? I know at first they had differences because Pimp put it out there, you know, and everybody knew about it. How did you end up working with both of those guys? Or was it during that time? It was right after, you know. what I mean, everybody grown men, you know. We have problems and we have uh, disagreements, but you know what? We always seem to turn things around and we always work work it out. That's Whether what it takes that, a short amount of time, a long amount of time, whatever it is. I mean, when you are maturing, then you understand that, you know what, I can iron these differences out. I, I, I can play my position to this point if, if I want to have a point where I'm going to stop and not be involved in different things or whatever it is, you know, we always been able to sit down and really just iron things out, you know what I mean, or, or, or work through things and find our way, whatever it's going to be. It always end up in a positive motion, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was always, it was a beautiful thing when they did get back together and they started doing records. Those, they we said get back together, but they were there when they got together. They when they got, cause they never yeah. was nah. jiving. I nah. knew that. So nah. when you what what nah. sticks out about Zero, and I have to ask you that, like when you was working with him. I mean, Zero. A lot of people don't know Zero's a producer and a singer and a rapper. I believe, and I I you could tell that. So when you're looking at all three of those things, Zero don't really need nobody to do no records. He can do it He's all. Super talented. He crazy talented to the point that. I think he doesn't get enough credit for the talent that he has. I don't think that he he gets enough credit for the groundbreaking things that he do. When you listen to new artists like Larry June, you hear Zero in there. Yeah, but Zero Zero kind of built it that way. Or, yeah. or it seemed like they well, even Jay Prince. I, I mean, it seemed like it was built almost in a cultic fashion. I'm being real when I, I I'm on the outside looking in, and I'm saying when I seen Zero. And to this day, when I think about Zero, I think Zero is one of the dopest artists, but I think he got his own people, and I think he know it. Yeah. Without you see what I'm saying? Like, the he way they that. built him up. Yeah, he know that. But, you know what I mean? He's, he can he can stretch out as far as he want, you know what I mean? And when you got a comfort zone like that, and it's that, it's that consistent, it's nothing really to talk about. And yeah. That's, that's part of some of the things that I be expressing to Al is like, look, you can't look at the masses. You got to look at the numbers. Yeah. You know, when I mean numbers, look at the money. Yeah, yeah. And look at the consistency of the people that are dealing with you and that are supporting you. That's dope. And that's how you get to where you need to get. Who would you like to work with? Other oh, than all, it, other than he, people you've already. So many. You, you, know, you don't have nobody out there that you're like, I, I, I could work I with him. I'm good. You just done it. But you got to think about it. Everybody who we've asked that question here on this platform, who it's, everybody said? Drake. And He already. <laughs> I just got a record with the baby and uh, Buster Rhymes and T Pain. Did you? Yeah, and it's gonna come out later this year. That's dope. It's another one of them situations. It's just boop. Wow. There it Did is. you said the baby Buster Rhymes and T Pain? Yeah. Man, so people people already know what it is when they see the tracks and the way yeah. that you coming with it. You can't man. suppress it, man. You know what I mean? I could do all of the all of the promotion, all the social media, Java, and all of that. I can do all of that, but at the end of the day, man. The talent gonna stick out regardless. Yeah, I mean, I'm 30 years, man. Who 30? 30. Who have you really outside of uh, uh, Black Car Steve O? I know you work with him, but producer wise, younger guys who who have you uh, uh, kind of of uh, you know uh, helped to to understand the music? I really can't say that I've done that, but I think indirectly, if I've I've touched a lot of people, mm. you know, because I'm a loner. I like to work when I'm in the studio. I'm working. I'm not, I'm not, you know, really going to get in the studio with a bunch of people and do tracks and all of that kind of stuff because I could do everything. So I never, yeah. you know, never look at it to like, okay, this is a person that I did. But I know that I've influenced a ton of people. 
in and outside of the South and Texas and everywhere else. You know, I've influenced people all overseas and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why I can't wait for you to drop these tips that you're about to do to educate because you're going to touch so many more people. Yeah, yeah. I beats for breakfast, man. When, what, we what's going to, on? We getting ready to gear back up. That's what I was saying. You yeah. kind of done pulled up for yeah, the I'm holiday. Re, I'm, I'm rebranding. I think you, know you know pulled up for the holiday. You know what? I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, I, it wasn't good enough for me. Really? Nah. It was dope. It wasn't good enough for me. I stopped. I was like, this is not what I'm, I want. I want it to be better than this. So can you give us insight on what you're going to do to make it better? Some of the content that I'm talking about, the tips, that giving people mm -hmm. tips. Um, I'm going to do some viral video, video stuff, some interviewing. Okay. And different things like that and really brand, brand it out. So you know you're going to set it up to where it can be. I seen the, uh, I think it was the ATM. Many, you got the same thing I got. I got one in there. Yeah. I said, man, he he, he working. Oh, he, yeah, I got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> you love using it? I have. Use I don't even use it. I Bro, I'm in there with, with the little controller on the phone and everything. I'm switching back and forth from camera yeah. to camera. Yeah. All of that. I got to get used to that. Yeah, it's just I, dope. I be, I be just, I like, I'm so particular. Yeah. I don't want to mess nothing up. I, I know you can drop all the Lord thirds and do all the stuff. Everything. You know but I, mean? I just I, I don't know I get set in my ways and that's why I feel like I feel like I needed to 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 fall back because I wanted to uh, be able to to fully use all of the everything that I have in my possession to yeah. make what I'm doing good you know I'm really trying to make a habit out of being great on, on everything that I do that's what I want that's dope that's the way that's you're supposed to right yeah. I think when I talked to uh, uh was it uh who was it it was that old boy in Luke, what's it Rick Ross Freeway Rick mm -hmm. Ross he was like. His secret is to go get the best people to work with so he can be the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't forget that. Like, that's what he seek out. Because the, you can't do everything yourself and you can't know everything yourself. So no. he search out the people with the knowledge to know what he needs to know and put them in place to make himself great. Yeah. So are you interested in a documentary or do you? I've got one. I've won an award on my first documentary that I ever shot. I shot it in uh, 2019, but I decided to add Okay. Some more parts to it. So we're I guess I need to look it up and do it. Where, where is it? I, I don't. Even, I haven't even put it out yet. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that, that sucks, man. And that's a documentary on your life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's. I need that. There's so much that I didn't get a chance to go into the details at one hour. So now we're going to do like a, four more. So we're looking at about a five, five to six part series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is a lot of deep stuff. You know what I mean? So to go into detail on a lot how of you how who how and are you, you filming yourself yeah that's what i was asking i have one solace is doing a lot of the filming you know shout out to him he really uh taught me a lot of things i started editing my own stuff yeah, and, yeah. you know I, mean, I learned a lot of things from them so and then i just i'm a tv junkie so i've been watching a lot of things so yeah now, Especially yeah, when you watch documentaries to see exactly how they do it. It's yeah. like you don't notice certain things until you start to Process be interested yeah. in yeah. it. And then you start to look at them like, okay, they, they messed up on that. No matter how yeah. big that documentary could be, yeah. you're like, no, I saw that mistake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. start to pick up. And so you're real picky anyway, because oh, I can yeah. tell just by the conversation and the music. Yeah. It's very detailed and, and we ain't making no mistakes here. Nah. So we got to try to keep doing it. And then you just revamping the, the uh, uh, beats for breakfast. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we see a lot of critiquing going on here. Yeah. How deep in the documentary did you go? Like, did you do like a lot of interviews of past acquaintances and family members and all yeah, of we that? Yeah, we, we didn't go too, too deep. The crazy thing about it is the day after Nip got killed, I started filming. Mm. So mm -hmm. they caught all of that emotions and, you know, it was real super fresh. Yeah. Then. And so we went through that. We started out with that. Then we went back into where I started it. I started... Uh, in the, in the church where I played at, yeah. and I started doing some filming there, and just kind of went chron chronology right through the lines of yeah. everything that we were doing. So, um, man, I'm just I, when once I looked at it, I could look at it every day. It's just it's so emotional, fluid, and entertaining. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Until you know, I mean, it was a really dope situation, and we we went in and we uh, submitted it to this uh, film festival in L.A. and, and it we loved won. It. Wow. Wow, before anybody could even see it. I know, yeah. ain't nobody see it. But he yeah. won. It's dope. <laughs> and how long, because you say you have to break it up, but how long is it now if you had to put it in all it, in one? It's an hour, and then with the other parts, if I was to do it, count everything else, it'd be about six to seven hours. Wow. Mm. That's, because, that, you know, we're going to cover being on the run, cover when I was a rapper lot, cover when I started with Slim Thug, 
and then it end with the current stuff and yeah you know so you're talking about 30 years 30 years man that's a long time if you ever had to do a movie who would you want to um play your role oh if you had to <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we're actually doing a tv uh show on my life now it's called pwa okay so what we, does pwa stands for well it stands for <laughs> yeah, because he did that too. Yeah, so you know, I mean, uh, it's that gonna, would be a dope show. Yeah, it's going to be about my life, about that, that's on the dope, ride, man. All of that kind of stuff. So we basing it off of that, and we developing that right now. I got a, a dope team that I'm working with. Shout out to Ivy and uh, Carmen, and everybody else that's working with me. We've been developing and getting ready for this, so it's going to be something major. You, you know have I mean? a lot of projects doing all yeah. at one time. Yeah, yeah. How are you able to do Manage all of everything. these? Right. You know what? I want to own my stuff, so I'm. I want to be heavy on me and not heavy on nobody else. I like it. You know, I like actually, it. I got my great grandfather documentary and, and movie that we are about to do. I'm actually going to be in San Antonio at the uh, MLK parade. Okay. Where I'm going to speak about him inventing the plane and all of that stuff. Wow. So you know, I'm. I'm so. Man, I'm so my purpose is so great right now. Man, I it's, man, it's, I'm, it's a dope thing that you embrace us like you did, yeah. man. I say thank you, man. Yeah. You know, um, just humbled the fact that you you every time I call you pick up the phone, you're always available for me. And that, that's dope, man. Like when you meet somebody, a real one. Yeah. There's a lot of them out here. I don't well, I ain't gonna say that. But <laughs> <laughs> I just call who I call, yeah. and God give me who He give me. Mm -hmm. I always say that. You know what I mean? When I look at producers. God might not give me this other one. We gave him Mr. Lee, and that's dope. And he got 31 platinum. Now I can strut my stuff. I ain't like Mr. Lee. I can't hold it and contain it. I yeah. got to let him know my guy's that guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> getting but, it in. Yeah, getting it all the way in, man. So, man, I, we definitely want to uh, share what we, yes. what, we yes. what we got here for you, man. We just love you and appreciate you, man. Um, and and the thing I wanted to give this to you the first time you was here, but I I told you that yeah. like man I always people that's what we came in the door doing, and it it, it was fifteen we gave out yes and last year yeah and it was just a dope Carl just got one the people who really just stick out to us like man we can't see this guy and not not appreciate him because we are we are, we a podcast but we wanted to bless people man yeah. that was the whole game for us. Yes, so I'd like to read your award. Okay. We here at Boss Talk would like to present Mr. Leroy Williams, a.k.a. Mr. Lee, in recognition of the many years dedicated to the music industry, a legend record producer making platinum and gold hits after hits 2022. Hey. Appreciate it. Man, I like it, man. That's dope, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Like I said, that's the the game. That's the game changer there for us, man. The game changer is that we able to touch people and we able to acknowledge them while we in the game. Yeah, and that's what we wanted to do. I mean, do. that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, the money is money, but the appreciation and the thought process yeah. in it is everything. I, I tell people that all the time. Like I said, you one of the dopest that, that sit in that seat when it come to what you do. Um, everybody else have to learn, have to, have to, you put, you, you definitely deserve to put a class together to help these youngsters yeah. because they need it, man. I'm I want them real. to, I want them to, to be able to see the fruit from their labor. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a lot of people that got records that's bigger than me, that big, bigger than any record that I've ever done, but the residuals from that work is not matching. It's not matching, is it? And it's a reason for it, but they have to find out why. What happened to the music, man? Do we, where are we at right now? We're just in a, at a show and tell. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a show and tell. It's a. It's about. You know, just it's about social media stuff now. It's about being able to look some look a certain type of way. But, you know what I mean? But it's it's. I'm like, look, man. I do. You know what I mean? My my logic of looking at things are so different, and maybe it's because I'm older. But, you know, I mean, it's a lot of things that I feel like um, these young people are spending money on and blowing money on, and they're not, and they're in the moment. Because I've done it. I, man, when I was younger, I found myself looking at what I was doing, and I realized, like, damn, man, I'm walking out of this house. And at the time, I was staying in a one-bedroom apartment. And, bro, I was spending, like, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a day. Wow just doing stupid shit, buying jewelry and doing all type of, I, dude, I was in this apartment driving a 600 Mercedes. Wow. And then, and I was like, man, what am I doing? 
And I remember that that night I God I came was home with you, man. And I just totally reversed that that thought process, and that's when I built my house. Now, I, at that time, I think I was like twenty two years old. Let me ask you something. When you think about the, what you just said, it brought something back to my memory. Like to see Young Dolph when he got uh, when he went to, got got killed over at that cookie shop. To be in a Lambo or whatever, you know, this nice car and be in this certain setting just kind of on your own with the rep. How do we how do we how do we try to change our younger people thinking when it comes to how they move, man? It's about the energy that you give out. But you understand you know what, what I'm mean? saying, it's, though, it's right? Really, I, I totally get it. I mean, sometimes you can be in the hood and not be in the hood. You don't have to be in the hood to be in the hood. You don't have to be there to give. To, to people and facilitate them, you don't have to be there all the time. You know what I mean? You're not a regular person. It's, it's kind of like the Nipsey thing, but in a different way. It's the same thing, though. You know what I mean? You People, we want to think that we can be in our neighborhoods and be safe from where we at, where we came from. But that's just the opposite because you got so much, so many people that's looking at you that we couldn't get out of that situation, and that's hate, resentment, all of these bad energies that are surrounding you and sometimes you are so oblivious to it that you don't even see it and you feel like oh i shouldn't have to move this way this is my hood but yeah you got to move that way it's just it, i didn't think about it until i said it yeah the how similar it is yeah because they both were in their own city or yeah. own town where people knew them and and like i say when they look at them you're looking at these people are celebrities man mm-hmm Dolph was a independent artist that was a millionaire times over. Yeah. In the neighborhood still. Yep. Uh Nipsey Hussle was a million times over. Uh, a, a a celebrity in the neighborhood. Just there. Yeah. It's you can't move like that. You After can't. you move so far up. You can't. It's just like the president doing his <laughs> term and then getting out of office and thinking he's gonna be in a regular crib in a neighborhood with no security. It ain't gonna happen. You can't do it. You can't do that. Wow. You know I mean, you got to, once you once you pray for something, once you strive to be in a certain place, you got to look at what comes with that. You're right. right. You got to look at that. You got to look at the responsibilities of it. Like for me, like I'm just not getting in tune with how I do business now. It's even being honest about how I feel. Cause so, you know, I used to get on bullshit with motherfuckers when they if, if a person did some crazy shit to me, I would just sit and let them do it. And then I'm gonna push the button and do what I'm gonna do. And when I do what I'm gonna do. They're going to be the victim then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm looking at it like, you know what? Let me just. Up front. I'm just going to let you know about this right now. We're going to go in and get past it. That way I, it won't be nothing else that shouldn't be done. You know, and then I'm understanding that business and personal shit is, is, is two lanes. But that works better when you. You're uh, supposed to be that way. I Man, I said it in the last interview was here. When I used to do business with Jay and, you know what I mean? Jay was a person that he's, he's family oriented at rap a lot. But when it's time to do business, you ain't the homeboy when the business comes. It's, it's you do you business, business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going to negotiate what I want. You tell me we're going to come in the middle of it. Or if you don't express what you what you want and you sign whatever you sign, you made that agreement. It wasn't that I say, hey, you need to do this and yada, yada. Nah, you, it's business. You sold your hour. Yeah. Pretty much. You sold your hour. Yeah. But I, like I said, when I thought about what, and, and, and I, I'm going to touch on the Dolph thing a little bit more. Doby, Dolph. Doby was at his hometown. Dolph was at his hometown. Uh, the Great, I don't know if you remember him, but he was one that was at in his home hometown. Um, the uh, Great who? He, he, he had a song, All My Life I Hustled Just To Get That Money. It was, it was, it was a guy. He, was, he, he got killed at, I think it was at the Waffle House. Uh, but all these different cases, man, uh, where now you got some that wasn't, but there's a lot of time. Do you think it's better to leave where you're from and, or, or, or to stay in your own neighborhood but move a certain way? And never go back and visit? Well, you can go visit, but you got to be careful. Yeah, you definitely got to be careful. But, I mean, it's just a certain way you move. If you're a millionaire, you can't live amongst poverty-stricken people. That's right. How? You can't. It is, it is, you can't be in a in a place, and uh, you riding around in a two hundred thousand dollar car, and a person striving and struggling trying to get in a five ten thousand dollar car. You can't. You can't surround yourself with that type of 
in that type of situations because it's a lot of things that's going to come with that. Now, unless you build up your whole neighborhood too and yeah. bring them up with you, but I'll be, no, but it's it's not, that yeah, doesn't that, work that way. But that's the mentality. That's what's getting people killed. That's right. It's that's what's right. getting them killed is that nobody wants to learn how to fish. They want you to, to catch the fish, clean it, cook it, and give it to them and feed the it to them. <laughs> yeah, that's what they think. Yeah. Well, if you made it, man, and I used to hang out with you and yada yada, and now that you made it, I man, nigga, you ain't coming back and getting me. But they're not seeing all the struggling that you did to get where you was at. They're not seeing them nights where you couldn't afford to buy food or your lights was off and you trying to strive to be great. They're not experiencing none of that stuff. And and what you say amplifies when you talk to them. Yeah. So if you say something like, it, it don't even have to be that bad. You could say, hey, man, I can't do that for you right now, man. You got to, you know, move or, you know, yeah, or do. If you say you. anything like that. Yeah, that's pistol action. They already because they already yeah. mad because they already didn't make it and you did. Yeah, that's that's what's gonna happen. You so, know what I mean? It's, but at the end of the day, it's like I've called myself in situations where I've had to make decisions that was that were best for me, that left other people in unfortunate situations. But it was business. Yeah, a lot of people took it personal. Oh man, you 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 did this. Why you didn't do that? Oh man, you just left us leaving us hanging. Nah, bro. It's I, at some point in time you have to fend for yourself. Yeah, and. Sometimes you have to be selfish enough to understand that you have you can't be good for everybody else if you're not good for yourself. That's Mr. Lee, guys. Um, so, Mr. Lee, thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, uh, I know already. How can people get a hold to you on that? I always say this. On, uh, they got to see that Beats for Breakfast and yeah. all the other stuff when he revamp it. I'll be on yeah. there. I mean, it's Mr. Lee713 on Instagram, Mr. Lee713 on Twitter, producer Mr. Lee on Facebook, Mr. Lee713 on Snapchat, TikTok. You know, if you tap in, I'm going to tap back. I got a question. So oh, how yeah. was it? Because um, he was on Breakfast Brothers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was. He was. We, so, we interviewed Ricky Book on Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a cool thing. Yeah. How did you enjoy it? How was it? It was dope. I mean, Ricky is a real dope, dope guy, man. He's real genuine. And, uh, you know, anytime he calls me for anything that he needs, I'm always be there. Yeah. You know, I'm man. so proud of what he's doing with his restaurants and Boy. I've seen what he did and what he where he came from with that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I always admire Rick because Ricky be you know he he strives to do the best in everything that he's that he does. Yeah, he does definitely. And yeah. them what them old uh, what them old waffle uh, them old uh, we can't eat them right now because we're on our little Chicken diet. Chicken waffles. Yeah, yeah. but it, it was the red velvet. Was it red velvet? Yeah, that's the one that got her. Yeah, yeah, it was soft too. Yeah, you'll be fat mess with Ricky, man. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for coming on the show. We love you, man. I appreciate y'all. Man, love too, and man. we gonna definitely we stay and tapped in. Whatever Don't you're doing, we listening, trying to figure out which way Mr. Lee going. Cause we going with him. Yeah, man. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred One. And we out. Hey, Mr. Lee, we here at Boss Talk One Hundred One would like to present Mr. Lee Roy Williams, aka Mr. Lee, in recognition of the many years dedicated to the music industry a legendary record producer making platinum and gold hits after hits 2022. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, man. We're passing out these roses while they're here, man. Oh, that's the most important thing, man.